This is Paul Brarin here from TiggerTry.com. I'm here at VMworld 2018 US on my second cut, working with James Myers here. And James and I were just talking about NVMe advancements in, say, the last, uh, well, year specifically with Optane. So can you show me a little bit about the hardware that you got in the booth and the logos that I see on the side of this hardware demo that you have? Yeah, so the logos on the side are new vSAN ready nodes. We have them from our partners that feature the Skylake CPU, Optane SSDs as a caching layer, and our P4510 as the data layer. And so more and more partners are getting vSAN ready nodes out there right now that include the Optane SSD to give you the best TCO. At Intel, we talk about a little bit of Optane and a lot of NAND really giving you that best TCO. And that's what we have in the front of the rack. We actually have a four node cluster, standard 2U servers, where we're using two disk groups on each node with an Optane SSD, a 375 gig caching SSD with a 30 drive writes a day. And then the P4510 in the, in the back end is the data store. And this particular system, that whole, that whole uh, setup here, you can see, you can run over 1,000 VMs, as many as 1152, I think is what we quoted on this on VMMark. Okay, so James, a couple things. Earlier I asked you about your title and role at Intel. And also, uh, I can just point out, you may see a familiar logo, the Intel Optane logo there. Have a look at James's bow tie, there you go. So if you've seen him on Twitter, you know him from that. But tell me about your role at Intel. So I, I run our storage solutions architecture group at Intel. We focus on optimizing the best storage solutions and bringing the best value to the customers, helping them consolidate their workloads. All right, thank you. And um, as you know, my blog is focused on NVMe for a good three years from some of the very first NVMe devices that came out. A lot less uh, protocol overhead than SATA and a faster bus speed and designed for flash from the start, right? If you could show me a little bit more about what's running inside the bleak, behind the blinky lights in the server and then also over in the table there, you have some NVMe devices, including Optane. If you could show me around. Yeah, so what, what we're actually running are all NVMe in this particular stack. They happen to be two and a half inch drives in this, in this particular box. But over here on the other side of one, I'm going to slip in and grab our add-in card. And so this is the caching device. It's a P4800X. Now, it's in a two and a half inch form factor inside the server. But it's got the right logo on this one, so I'll show you this one. We have the same thing in a client drive. It's called the 900P. It's very, very similar SSD. It's, a, it's the right form factor. It's that two and a half inch form factor that you may know and love with the cool heat sinks on the back as well. And so the Optane SSD is a cache and then the P4500 is a data layer. And we're actually moving that. We've got a new drive called the P4320, which is QLC NAND for the read layer. And so that really brings the cost down in these systems as well. So our theory is a little bit of Optane and a lot of QLC is the future. So we can just define QLC, quad level. Yeah, so it, it, it's quad-level cell, but that's really a misnomer. Really, it's four bits in every cell. The reason they call it quad-level is they had MLC and then TLC and then QLC, but it's really two bits, three bits, and four bits per cell, which means there are actually 16 levels inside the cell that they're trying to read. So they're floating electrons onto a gate, and they're trying to discern between a very small number of electrons in these levels. So when you have 16 levels, it's really hard to do. With Intel, we went to the 3D NAND structure. We grew it tall, and we allowed to make the cells a little bigger. That put a few more electrons in every cell, allowed us to then have 16 levels that you can calibrate to. That just brings the cost down. The overall, you get more bits on a wafer, and that's what determines the cost, how many bits you can pack into a wafer. Wow, great segue. What I was about to ask you about next, and that is, well, a lot of my articles at TinkerTry are really home lab focused, and they tend to be M.2, very dense storage, right? And two terabytes is where we've kind of been capped out for a while. So it'll be interesting as you get the density up higher for the very tiny M.2 form factor drives. Um, now I know those drives tend to be consumer, but there's also enterprise. So what are you actually showing here for an M.2 that I see over there? I'll get a close up of it. Well, the M.2 that we have over here is actually Optane memory. It's really designed for the client. Um, and we'll see those going into laptops. But what we see in the data center is a brand new form factor. And unfortunately, I don't have one to show you. But there's something called the EDSFF. We called it the ruler last year, and it was a big, long thing. But now there's a short version of it. There's EDSFF uh, E1.L for the long one and E1.S for the short one. And it actually looks a lot like a 2.5-inch form factor in terms of length. But then the height is only 1U high, and the width is thinner. And so it looks like a little slotted card. And those are where we're going to see the higher density going in the data center as we go forward, where we've got the short versions of those being 8 and even 16 terabytes, and then the long versions, 32 terabytes in a single SSD. Well, thank you so much. I have one last question. That's about uh, competitors seem to be going to different. There's been a lot of form factors out there. There's been M.3, minor discussions there, too. It's basically a chubbier M.2, a little wider, right? Any comments there versus the 22110 length that didn't really 
maybe take off. A lot of motherboards are coming out without the physical space for beyond a 2280. And that's a 2280 on display. That's a standard length. Do you have any comments there? Yeah, I think, I think the key is there's a lot of opportunity to innovate in form factor. Now that people realize you don't have to stick inside this hard drive spinning media case that you've got here. And so everybody's trying to do their best. But we're really excited about the EDSFF because there's so many different companies getting together in a standard. And every SSD manufacturer out there, and as well as every server manufacturer, are now endorsing the EDSFF standard as we go forward. So you'll see over the next year more and more drives coming out and more and more systems coming out with that form factor as things standardize a little bit more. And that brings a little more value to the customer when all the suppliers line up and, and play nice with one another. All right, great, thank you. And I'm just closing up with you're showing some uh, vSAN and the architecture, and, the, and uh, I appreciate the overview here. Obviously, uh, Optane and the 4510, if you're not familiar with, a little more uh, recent update. Um, anything else, any closing thoughts then on Optane and what makes it special for vSAN? It's pretty obvious to some people, but people who visit my website, that might not be so obvious. Well, I think the key with Optane and vSAN is just the TCO it brings. As you'll see as some of the slides roll forward, We've tested the Optane SSD as a cache device and then this QLC NAND as a data device. When you put them together, you actually get the same performance as you get with our standard TLC drives in terms of the whole vSAN performance, but then the cost comes down by 20 to 25% lower at the vSAN level. So being able to have a, a very high endurance, very high performance caching device in vSAN, plus then a slower, cheaper NAND flash device gives you just that better TCO. More VMs, a little cheaper. Excellent. Thank you so much, James, for your time today. I really appreciate it.